Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kalika and I wanted to start this video off by asking a question. Yesterday, I really wanted to do a Halloween livestream reading a choose your own spook kind of book where I would be reading the story and it's up to you guys to pick the direction that the story takes. Now, I was traveling back from a wedding yesterday and by the time I got home, it was late, we hadn't eaten dinner and I was really tired, so I decided it was best not to stream. I'd like to ask if this is something that you guys would still want to see. I know it's past Halloween, but I still think it could be something that's really fun to do. So what I'm going to do is put a little card in the top right of this video for a poll, if you would kindly of click it. If you do want to see this, it will most likely be held on a Thursday, Friday or Saturday. And I'm aware that a majority of my audience are based in America, so if you can leave a comment on what time you think we best for the stream to start, and maybe I can find a happy medium. <laughs> But anyway, that's enough of me blabbing, let's get into some malicious compliance stories. You want me to go back and get the U-Haul truck that won't fit through the drive through Okay. My wife and I had just driven 17 hours to our new state. We had to stay in a hotel and wanted to get some food for the night. I saw a jack-in-the-box around the corner, so I figured I'd grab us some food. We had to park the U-Haul truck nearly a mile away from the hotel because it was huge, and also because it's frickin' California. I didn't want to walk all the way to the truck just to not be able to fit it through the drive through so I walked over. It was late, and the main storefront was closed, so I walked to the window. I said, hey, we just moved here and I have a moving truck, but it won't fit through the drive through The lady says that she can't serve me without a car, and I need to go back and get my U-Haul. I told her that it wouldn't fit. We go back and forth. I'm even willing to pay double at this point. I try everything imaginable to avoid the ignorance of driving a U-Haul through the drive through that won't fit. Still, she says no. I go, okay, I'm gonna buy a hundred tacos when I come back. Is that what you really want? She didn't care. 30 minutes later, I make it back with the U-Haul. I drive it into the drive-thru, almost knocking down the height limit sign. People behind me were like, what the frick? I explained the ignorance of the jack-in-the-box and they understood completely. I squeezed all the way to the ordering speaker and said, hey, it's me, I'm back and I need 100 tacos. She was like, you were serious? Heck yeah, I was. I backed the truck out of the parking lot and waited. There was a line backed up pretty far because they were not only making my stuff, but the frickin' U-Haul took up nearly every spot in the lot, almost blocking the drive through After about 20 minutes, they came out with my tacos. There were three big-ass bags packed with tacos. One of them ripped open right when she walked out and like 20 tacos spilled out. I said I didn't want them anymore. Hell, I didn't even want a refund. She handed me the two other bags. I noticed there was a homeless guy out front. I gave him one of the bag of tacos and took the rest home. I wasn't necessarily proud of this moment, but if you've ever driven across the country and just wanted some food before bed, I feel like you might have done the same. <laughs> I can actually relate to this so much. While we were away at the wedding, we had the cat's food set on timers, so we knew that we had to be back in the house at 5pm for their dinner feed. Well, our train was delayed, so we made it back into Belfast at about 5 o'clock. And because it was Halloween, of course there wasn't a taxi to be found quickly. We were also starving as well because we'd only had breakfast at the hotel at about 9 o'clock that morning. So after waiting about 20 minutes on the taxi, it finally showed up. And I remember thinking on our way home that I would literally pay this man whatever he wanted if we could just be at my house in the next 5 seconds. <laughs> but we eventually got home. The cats were happy to see us and they still had some dry food left over so we knew they weren't starving or anything. And Marcus even left half of his food so he could cuddle up with us for a little bit. That's good to be home. A tale of tricks and treats. Once upon a 9pm jury, I was trick-or-treating around the neighbourhood with my younger brother. The two of us were having a magical time until we knocked on the door of a neighbour who took it upon himself to make sure we truly deserve those 10 cent fun size snicker bars. Customary greetings of trick-or-treat and happy Halloween were exchanged before we dove for the cauldron of candy, but that wasn't enough to appease the guardian of Halloween. He swiped the cauldron out of our reach and scrunched his face in scrutiny. Are you two in middle school? He asked dubiously. No, I replied, wondering what some intrepid middle schoolers must have done to incur his wrath. He still clutched the candy cauldron, pondering what his next move in this game of wits that my brother and I had unknowingly stumbled into. Finally, he broke his silence with a riddle that could stump even the most learned philosophers. Are you sure you're not in middle school? For a moment, I wondered if we'd ever escape this quagmire of insanity, if the candy was really worth the loss of our very minds. What could us being in middle school possibly have to do with 
Oh. Oh. I suddenly understood. He thought middle schoolers were too old to be trick-or-treating. With inspired confidence, I stared down this cursed candy golem and replied truthfully. No, neither of us are in middle school. Giving us one last look of incredulity, he finally relented. My brother and I took our hard-won candy and made our way back home as heroes. Or as Goofy and Zorro. My memory's a little fuzzy. And as we bid the Sugar Sentinel a final happy Halloween, I wondered if the true prize was not the 10 ounces of chocolate our mother would be stealing later, but the satisfaction of outsmarting a genuine monster. You see, our family for generations has been cursed with youth. Neither of us were in middle school, it's true. We were both high schoolers, and I was only a few months from graduating. Hair colour policy? Be specific. I've just posted this as a comment, but I thought I would put it as a separate post. I work in healthcare in the UK. I won't say who it's for so I don't get in trouble, but it's the free healthcare that everyone gets. I colour my hair various colours and it really helps my mental health and fits in with my identity. I've been doing this within the organisation for the past 12 years and it's a running joke with my non arsehole colleagues that they don't know what colour hair I will have on my next shift. My patients love it and some of them even went to my hairdressers to have theirs coloured the same. My hospital brought in a no unnatural colours policy. This really pissed me off as I spend a proportion of my day staring at vaginas and not one of them has ever complained about my hair. Prior to the policy coming into effect, my manager approached me twice to remind me as a courtesy. At that time, my hair was a silvery grey, which is a natural hair colour. However, they didn't specify no unnatural hair colours. Cue me turning up to work with bright pink hair. My manager takes me aside, reminds me of the uniform policy and says she will have to send me home. This then gives me the opportunity to point out the flaw in their policy and show her several colours of bright pink flowers native to the UK. I inform her that I haven't breached the policy and if she sends me home it'll be on full pay and I will involve my union. The end result was me working the rest of the shift, and the rest of the next two months, with bright pink hair while the management were correcting the policy. I've toned it down to a pastel pink as my kids said I was embarrassing, but it's still a win for me. I'm working in a different department which gives zero craps about my hair colour because, again, vaginas. Guy convinces insurance not to cover a procedure. Someone over on a-hole tax mentioned this subreddit so I'm posting it here too. This happened several years ago. I was working as a customer service rep for a health insurance company at the time. A guy called in about an elective weight loss surgery he had already gotten. Looking through his call history, I could see that he called in before having the surgery and was told that since it was elective it wasn't going to be covered, but he had lucked out. The way the hospital had filed his claim insurance had paid for $12,000 out of the $15,000 or so surgery. He wanted us to cover the last $3,000 and thought that since we had paid the $12,000, that meant that the $3,000 should be paid as well. I tried to explain to him how lucky he had gotten and that it wasn't something we normally covered at all, at which point he exploded at me. Listen here, you little jerk. Send my claim back to be reviewed right now or I'll call the CEO of your company and have them fire your ass for refusing to help a customer. I immediately said, Yes, sir. I'll send your claim back to be reviewed right away. Forwarded his claim back to the review department and an explanation of what the surgery was for. He called back a few weeks later, yelling about how we had reversed the payment of the $12,000, but I just had my manager handle the call since I didn't want to deal with him. Okay, I'll keep pushing the steak. A long time ago, I was waiting tables at a restaurant next to a cinema. It was a good place, cool people, reasonable pay, and very few of the usual hospitality issues. The only fly in the ointment was the shift manager. The shift manager was an egotistical bully and loved pulling stunts like last minute schedule changes. I came on board at the start of winter, which was their busy time. I was a contract worker in another field and earned enough cash working a few contracts a year and I took hospitality jobs in between contracts, mostly for meeting people and having something to do. Because of this, I wasn't reliant on the job and had a deal of autonomy. One day, we were especially rushed and a few steaks were ordered. While carrying them out, I noticed that they were fatter and juicier than normal. Chef got a good order, so I started recommending them to the customers. Even though they were the priciest things on the menu, they started flying out the door. I had a good 15 steak orders until I noticed that the quality had dropped off. Chef either ran out of the good stuff or had switched stations. No problem, I stopped recommending them to the customers. And this was noticed by the shift manager who was dying to have a go at me that day. 
He told me in no uncertain terms that I was to get back to selling the steak. The temptation to quit in the middle of a busy service was there, but I went back to work and served another 15 plus steaks to a rim of around total 100 diners, so 20 odd steaks were served subpar, and this caused quite the reaction from disgruntled customers as you can imagine, and I was more than willing to provide them with the manager's name, not the chef's, with which to complain. The ensuing tide of angry, irate customers that demanded refunds was great to watch. I came back into work the next shift to get a mouthful from the shift manager. It was another busy night. And that's when I decided to quit. Okay, so that's all for r slash malicious compliance. I really hope you did enjoy it. As always, if you do want to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. My Twitter, Discord and Patreon links are in the description, and any support is greatly appreciated. Also, if you would like to see the scary story stream, please leave a comment on which time and day you think would work best, and we'll try and get something sorted. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye!